because now I am bugged. Because I thought Ascension was the map that was the blue storm. Does anyone know what I'm talking about here? Hold on. Delete that. Do a quick restart. Blue storm, brood war remake. Maybe it'll say. Oh, this is not. This is StarCraft fandom. Liquipedia might know. Uh, do do do. Does not say. I will ignore that for the moment and just not bring it up. And instead, I will talk about these two players. But let me restart the replay really fast. I'll restart the replay really fast. Bear with me, guys. Ascension. I swear Ascension's that map, though. That it was just a uh, blue storm turned into th into three. Sorry. Let's try this again. Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. 12 o'clock location, we have Gretorp starting as the Purple Protoss, bottom right-hand corner. We have Hazley Nut, aka Potato Nut, starting as the Blue Zerg. This is going to be on Ascension. And this is a show match series between Hazley Nut and Gretorp. I'm not sure if there's any money on the line, but there certainly was pride on the line. There was a lot of friendly trash talking between these two. If you do not know about Hazley Nut's channel, go check it out. It is Twitch TV, I believe just Hazley Nut. She is a very inspirational person, in my opinion. Just, like, straight across the board. She's, like, uh, back in the day, she started uh, CSL, the Collegiate Star League, which I think is still around. I'm not sure if they have a Brood War League anymore. But that was the first... It, there were two simultaneous, but that was, like, the first major big Collegiate eSport organization that was founded between her and Xeris. Speaking of Xeris, Xeris founded Team Light, and on Team Light was Gretorp. And you have Gretorp, who's an old-school Protoss player. He's mostly known for his StarCraft II casting. He's up to other shenanigans these days. But he started casting in NASL, actually uh, did a bit of casting coaching, if you can call it, back in the day with him, and tried to support him as I wasn't able to just drop my life and go cast NASL, so did a lot of background support. But yeah, he ended up doing a lot. Of, he was very influential in the early days of the StarCraft II uh, push, was part of NASL, which was absolutely gigantic, Is an old and was a very, very good Protoss player back in the day. However, he has not played in absolutely forever. The meta has changed dramatically. I'm not sure he's played in the 973 era or 9734 era. You have Hazley Nut, who's been practicing like a mad woman, and that's part of the inspiration. Uh, initially, I was like, Hazley Nut's going to do it. I can do it. And then just life fell apart where I wasn't able to really play StarCraft in lockdown the way I wanted to. We do see a gateway opener here for Gretorp. He scouted bottom left-hand corner first. Is making his way across. Looks like Hazley. Is she going to adjust upon seeing this probe, though? I think the Overlord might have seen the probe. So let's see if she goes north and does get that early scout. She opened up with, I believe, a nine pool. <clears throat> we are seeing just two Zerglings being produced. Not the full Zergling set. Mostly just wanted to make sure that Hatchery got up without a lot of harassment. He's going to need to produce a, a few additional Zerglings to deal with this initial Zealot. And the probe making its way into the base. Now the question is, is do the Zerglings, so do the initial Zerglings, harass that probe or do they move up? So Drone finds the gateway, is going to see the initial Zealot starting to back off now. Now here's the thing. Is it going to be new practice or old experience between these two? I'm going to, as far, and it looks like there was a probe kill here. So Gretorp losing his initial Drone Scout. The Zealot making its way back. The Drone making its way back. We do have two Zerglings. Are so we going to see four Zerglings? Second set of Zerglings is in production. Nexus, in the meantime, warping up. We do have a second Zealot on the way. Four Zerglings very rapidly. Oh, taking initial damage without reacting, though. Looks like that drone wanted to get engaged in the action, too. I love what Gretorp's doing here, and this shows you his experience in this match. Rather than fully engaging what he knew was a losing situation, he's just backing off a little bit and letting those shields repair right as he... He only took, what, one base damage before re-engaging? Waiting for that second Zealot before regrouping. The Zerglings starting to re-engage, not able to get that second Zealot kill. And again, Gretorp going to back off now with these two Zealots. You can see he's just very efficient with his units and very cautious. Third Zealot is out. It's kind of camping. He needs to be very careful with the, that Zergen counterattack. In the meantime, that natural expansion is up. However, it is not saturated. Hazley Nut has managed to sneak another expansion in that bottom right-hand corner. 
I swear this was a re- I was uh, actually redid the cast because like I thought this was a Blue Storm remake, but these have gas rather than mineral only at this stage. The Zerglings looking to get us around. They don't have speed upgrade. The Zealot just trying to get a little bit of base damage and some delay. Two Zealots and no additional Forge or anything else at the natural expansion. And Gretorp floating a lot of minerals, actually. Now dropping his own Forge. Is he going to have enough to actually defend this? He's actually pocketing the Zealots to the north while these Zerglings do a run-by. So I think he's hoping to get some run-by damage. But if he doesn't pull back, he might end up losing his entire front, especially without any cannons to defend this. So the Zerglings... They can just walk up and start doing damage on this gateway before there's even a cannon in place. Might even be able to get the gateway completely down. Second zealot, sorry, third zealot on the front spawning. Now those two zealots making their way back to the natural expansion. Hazely doesn't look like she's quite prepared for that. Looks like the Zergling's a bit confused as to where they want to go. Three zealots blockading their weapons one. And Gretorp very bravely not dropping a cannon. Perhaps realizing that Hazely not was going to have to flood back to the natural expansion. Hazely having a lot of trouble dealing with these early zealots is sitting a little bit behind where... She might be otherwise on the drone count, grouping up, losing a lot of mining time, is starting to make the way towards Lair, and losing some of that gas mining time. You see these Zerglings are just finally making their way back. Drone Drill trying to get what they can done against these Zealots. One Zealot eating a lot of damage, and this sh just shows you old school shenanigans still play in modern Brood War. And still no speed upgrading on those Zerglings. It looks like it's just about finished for Hazley Nut. But she's had a lot of economic dis uh, disruption, still sitting at 13 drones because she's just had to produce so many Zerglings, which is a great situation for Gretorp. He's actually got a cybernetic score, Citadel of a Dune, plopping down two additional gateways. It looks like seeing the large amount of Zerglings on the ground, he feels like he's safe, essentially against any potential air attack. Still not a, just not great saturation for Hazley overall. Four Zealots on the ground, level and weapons about halfway finished. There are a lot of Zerglings that she might be able to get something accomplished with. At the very least, she'll be able to repair, uh, repel the Zealot attack as it moves its way out. But it looks like Gretorp wants to go for, perhaps, I'm not sure that it's going to be the seven minute attack, but it wants to go ahead and get initial Zealot leg speed. Moving across that breach and losing two Zealots for his effort, starting to move back. He's only got a single Zealot and a single cannon defending. Hazley not going to press that effort. Is going to back off a little bit, but I think he's going to build a lot of zealots, wait for that leg speed to kick in, and he's going to have that leg speed, level and weapons, and start running across that, just tearing across the map with his zealots. I'm wondering if he knows the location of the third. We do have a spire in production, and keep in mind, no anti air for Gretorp at this stage of the match. A probe trying to march its way across to find something here. And this is a very scary situation. There is a, here's the thing, as those zealots move out, oftentimes they can push those mutalisks out depending on timing. However, if they manage to get towards the main, there are no cannon, there's only a single cannon just now warping in. There's a lot of room where these mutalisks could wreak havoc. And Gretor Gretorp's completely in the dark. He doesn't know what Hazley's up to, just knows that there's zerglings on the ground. Still, this is six zealots, three more coming. Leg speed just about finished, and level weapon level one weapons just about finished. So he still has that timing under his belt. Looks like to counter this, he is managing to sneak two gateways in the back corner to perhaps buy some time. So evolution chamber though, an additional hatchery, fourth hatchery, and a Sutton colony with some Zerglings to provide some defense for Hazley Nut. She has the spire finishing, but does not have the gas to really produce a lot of mutalisks at this stage. And that is going to be critical because that is going to be time lost, which is going to allow those Corsairs to get in production, which is allow allowing air control to be rest, just pulled out of Hazley Nut's hands. Also, level one weapons being upgraded on the cybernetic score. So it is going to be a very large counter air attack. And just as far as pure macro, pure old school macro goes, Gretorp is very much in the lead. 41 probes versus 27. And the Zealots still... On the ground, it looks like they're going to start making their way towards the third. There is a single Sutton colony there. Second Sutton colony is being built. Gretorp's just done a fantastic job of harassing Hazley absolutely everywhere, keeping that drone count low and, and just finding timings to negate a lot of these attacks. Zealots able to take down that Sutton colony, starting to press in on the second one. The Mutalisks are there, so now Gretorp knows that it was Mutalisks. Well, definitively. A second layer being upgraded. I'm wondering if this is a mistake from Hazley Nut. And if we'll see a cancel right here. Maybe worried about some sort of attack. I, don't, I doubt that. Second attack in the main. So it looks like a little bit of a mistake. Losing some gas right there. Gretarp going to go ahead and try to take his third base in the upper left-hand corner. And 
Hazley moving out with just a handful of Mutalisks right here. I think this is going to be a four count. So not even a full grouping to do kind of that pro harass, but as that's happening, you have a big anti-air attack stacking up. This is going to be eight Corsairs with that level one weapons. As soon as they're out in the field, unless a Scourge are taking them down nigh immediately, they're going to be able to just obliterate everything in the air. And I do not see a Hydralisk Den down yet for Hazley. Hazley moving up with those Mutalisks is now going to find those, those Corsairs just wiping everything out. Maybe, I'm not sure if she's going to be able to see the level one weapons upgraded or not. Red Torque currently at twice the supply of Hazley. Not, things not looking good for Hazley overall. Is starting to get that spot, that missile attack upgrade for the ground units. I'm looking for the Hydralis Den somewhere. But in the meantime, a lot of Overlords are just going to get absolutely obliterated. And I think that is going to potentially be GG. Just because this is an air force that cannot be contended with. Hazley has nothing in the air to deal with this. Is already in the red. And I still, yeah, I don't see a Hydralis Den. Well, there's a Hydralis Den here at the third. But even so, a couple Scourge getting up in the air. Does manage to land on a single Corsair. But this is a lot of lost mining time. This is also allowing Gretrup to go ahead and get his third up. He still has this brutal air force. And Hazley's just trying to contend with that while Gretorp is continuing to press into the late game. Some Scourge, yeah, those Scourge need to be really precisely landed to try to take care of this attack force. And just more Overlords getting obliterated as they're spawning. Scourge moving up, but they just, with that level and weapons, yeah, there's GG. So game one going to Gretorp. I think this is the best of five. First blood on Gretorp's side. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.